All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our continued conversation about chemical equilibrium. When we last saw each other, we discussed the idea of the equilibrium constant, which is our primary means of describing a system at equilibrium numerically. So we looked at Kc, which is the equilibrium constant for aqueous reactions. And then we looked at Kp, which is the uh, equilibrium constant for gas phase reactions. And we also derived a relationship that relates the two of them in case you need to find Kp if given molarities for a gas phase reaction or something like that. So what we're going to be doing in our lecture video series today is we're going to be continuing this idea about how do we numerically quantify what's happening to a system that is in equilibrium. So if we're going to do that, we need to have a couple of things that we're kind of down super comfortable with. One, the idea of what the equilibrium constant is. And then two, reminding ourselves of the fact that equilibrium is a state that our system achieves by undergoing some kind of change. So let's get started. So we have this new concept here, even though it's not gonna feel very new when we talk about it. And it's this idea of the reaction quotient Q. Now, why is this not something that I think is going to be super novel to you? The reaction quotient Q is a ratio of product concentration raised to their stoichiometric coefficient to reactant concentration raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. And the only difference between the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant is that the reaction quotient is not constant. And the reason why it's not constant is because this can describe our system and its relative amount or ratio of product to reactants at any time. During a chemical reaction. So if we had our general reaction, AA reacts with BB to establish equilibrium to form CC and DD, then Q would be expressed very similarly to how we express our equilibrium constant. So it would still be a proportion of concentration C to the C times concentration D to the D over concentration A to the A times concentration B to the B. And again, the thing that makes this unique and distinct from the reaction equilibrium constant is this is our proportion at any given time in the reaction. So the reaction equilibrium constant is only for when we are at equilibrium. So why do we care? <laughs> I don't ask this in lecture yesterday. Why do we care about the reaction quotient, right? Don't we think about like systems at equilibrium? Why would I want to know about this relationship between product and reactants at any time in the reaction? And the answer for that is if we know what the equilibrium constant is, and then we know what the reaction quotient is at some time t during the reaction, then we can use our knowledge about how those two quotients, those two expressions, those two ratios are related to figure out like how our system is going to establish its equilibrium. So I've got an example down here where we're looking at the dimerization to form N2O4 from NO2 gas. And I am showing three different states so kind of three different snapshots of what's going on in this reaction. Let's call this state one. 
where we're at time one during the reaction. Let's call this one highlighted in blue. The time at which we achieve equilibrium. And then let's call this third state here some other time T2 during the reaction. Okay. We have an idea of the value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So just for kind of like visual cluttering, I'm going to go ahead and write that our equilibrium constant K expressed in molarity, so it's Kc, is equal to 5.6 inverse molar. The unit is one over molarity. So I think it would be a good idea for us to write out our expressions of Q and K for each of these three different scenarios. So let's look at our first scenario green condition box. So time one, T1. We know the value of K, which is equal to 5.6 inverse molar. And we got this value of K by taking our concentration of our product. So that's our N2O4 at equilibrium and dividing it by our concentration of the reactant, NO2, which notice has a stoichiometric coefficient of two. So I need to square this concentration term in my denominator. And again, since we're talking about the equilibrium constant here, then we are referring to concentrations for this system established at equilibrium. And we have said that this is 5.6. So then what about Q? Like if we were to write a Q expression for this reaction, so Q would be equal to concentration N2O4 at time T1 over concentration NO2 squared at time T2 excuse me, time T1. I'm still looking at the first condition. So let's compare these two values, right? If I am looking at this situation here in this green box, it looks like I have predominantly my N2 or N NO2 present, the red molecules, right? NO2. So if I were to look here, I would see that my concentration of NO2 is large. And specifically, let's make it a relational statement. Our concentration of NO2 is larger than the concentration of N2O4. So what does that mean for the value of Q here? So let's think fractions. This means that Q is going to have a small number or smaller number in the numerator and a larger number squared in the denominator. And if we consider what this means about the overall value of Q, so if we've got a small number like one and then an even larger number in the denominator like 10, we recognize that to be some kind of fractional, less than one expression. And how does this compare to K? Well, K is equal to 5.6, whereas Q at this reaction time condition one, we know is going to be less than one, or specifically less than K, because K itself is certainly over one, it's 
So what does this mean if Q is less than K? So if Q is less than K, how is our reaction going to shift so that it can establish an equilibrium? So what can I do to make this quotient increase? So I have two ways that I can make a fraction increase. I can either increase the numerator or I can decrease the denominator. And if I think about what that means in terms of like what the value of the numerator and value of denominator relate to chemically, I can only increase Q if I decrease the concentration of NO2 and then increase the concentration of N2O4. That's the only way that this fraction can get bigger. So momentarily, what we will see is we will see under reaction condition one that our equilibrium will favor the production of products. So I will be driven to form products at time one. How about at equilibrium? So at equilibrium, we are saying that we have our concentrations in our reaction quotient equal to the concentrations of our substances at equilibrium. So when we are at equilibrium, Q equals K, and the reaction would not drive itself in any direction, forward or reverse, because we're already at equilibrium. Which then leaves us with scenario three, which is where we're at some time T3. So again, let's think about our reaction quotient Q. This is concentration N2O4 at T2 over concentration NO2 squared at T2. And if we look at this drawing here, I know that it shows that there's not any NO2, but we can't have a zero in the denominator. So let's just go ahead and add one in there. So if we are looking at what's going on, at this time T2, we see that predominantly we have an overwhelming amount of product, meaning we have a large number in our numerator compared to our reactant of which there's very little at this time. So what does that mean about Q? If this is a very large value and the denominator is a very small one, that means that Q has to be certainly greater than one. And in this case, if Q is less than, sorry, greater than K, which let's go ahead and presume it is. I don't know the value of Q here but let's just assume it's something greater than one, but less than our 5.6. Then if we have this truth here, we need to ask ourselves how we can get from a reaction quotient where we've got this large number up here and small number down here creating a Q that is bigger than K. So how is it that we can get this reaction quotient to lower? How do we get back to Q equals K? So again, we have to ask ourselves, when it comes to fractions, how can I make this smaller? I can decrease the numerator. So for us, that would be decreasing the amount of N2O4. And then I would increase the denominator or increase the amount of reactant, which means that I need to, if I am this chemical reaction, favor the reverse 
reaction, so increase the rate of the reverse reaction until we reach equilibrium. Because at equilibrium, our reaction of the forward and our reaction of the reverse are equivalent to one another. So this is the reaction quotient and how it relates to K. It's um, generally good knowledge just to have because it allows you to make predictions about our state of equilibrium or how our reaction, like from its initial conditions to its process to getting to equilibrium, how it might proceed, right? Is that a forward-driven reaction in this uh, scenario one here, like our green box, or would it be a reverse-driven reaction like the scenario here in our purple box? In our next video, we are going to be continuing to quantify equilibrium stoichi or equilibrium states, except now we are going to apply what we know about K, maybe even Q, um, specifically things like KC expressions and KP expressions to calculate reactions that are at equilibrium and then do what us chemists do naturally, which is perform some kind of stoichiometric analysis of that reaction meaning we want to calculate quantities of reactants and products at equilibrium. So this is where we're headed, equilibrium stoichiometry. See you in our next video.